Week four, no work, still on lockdown. Workshop vlog number five, beginning to lose my marbles. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now this is vlog number five, workshop update, general shop talk, that kind of thing. Just using this as an opportunity to check in with everybody and see how everybody's doing while we're all still on this lockdown nonsense. And uh, it's gonna go on for another three weeks here minimum, but I'd say it's gonna be a lot longer than that. I don't think things are ever gonna go back to normal. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to check in, see how you're all doing, share what I'm doing in the shop, quick update, welcome all the new subscribers. The channel has grown. Um, exponentially in the last few weeks. I wish it was under better circumstances, but uh, you guys seem to be enjoying the content, so I'm gonna keep doing my best to keep it coming and uh, keep you entertained with some different projects. I'm working on this Moxon voice, so I'll take you through that now in a second, show you how far I'm after getting with it. There is a few issues with it, so I'm trying to work out the bugs, so I'll uh, put it out to you guys and see what you guys can come up with again. I'm also working on this walnut cabinet, I'll take you through that, and uh, I'm spending a lot more time in my workshop, so I'm starting to notice things that need to be changed and updated. I definitely need to get some sort of air filtration system in here. Um, the, the mitre saw produces a lot of sawdust. I'm starting to feel it in my chest now that I'm spending more and more time in this workshop and less and less time out working. And uh, I also need some sort of dust extraction system, so some sort of pipe in something, so I have to keep pushing my dust extractor around the shop. It's really slowing things down, so. I might try and get to that this week and we'll do a video on it. So what I'm trying to do at the minute is source some pipe work, pricing up different things. So if I can come up with a real cheap, cost-effective option for running um, some dust extraction to, a, a, say, four or five machines. So I'll try and do that video on that this week and try and give you guys some information on that. So uh, yeah, how's everybody doing? I hope you're all hanging in there. We all seem to be taking a bit of a hammer now at the minute. Um, one thing I've noticed is that I'm struggling to sleep, so I haven't had a good night's sleep in about two weeks now. I'm starting to go a bit stir crazy and starting to lose the marbles and uh, yeah, I'm kind of struggling now to work on this Moxon voice because uh, the head is not in a good space. So I'm gonna put it out to you guys and get some advice and some help from you if you don't mind. So we'll take you through that now and we'll have a quick look. Then I'll take you through what I'm gonna do with the dust extraction system and we'll have a look at this cabinet and we'll just generally have some shop talk. So let's get on it. Right guys, this is the Camlock uh, Moxon voice style thing that I'm working on. Now a bunch of you guys commented on the video with a leg voice that she hadn't enough room for a leg voice. So I wanted to see if I could make a Moxon voice, or a, a Moxon, a Moxon voice style um, clamping system that you could fit to either your side of your bench or have it as a tail voice or an end voice on the end of your bench. System is not too bad, it has bugs, so um, I'm trying to work through it. I'm trying to get it to a stage where it's actually usable because there's no point in having a voice if it's a hassle to use, it's just gonna give you headaches and a nightmare and um, it'll be no fun, so I'm trying to work out the bugs. This, the concept is good, it's just getting it all to work together smoothly is the problem. So again, I have two, I have two cams, two handles, and uh, we have two tenon arms. That was the first issue I ran into because it's racking and it's wedging itself um, in the bench. Now, I'm, again, I'm retrofitting this to my bench. If I was to build these voices with um, a bench in mind, I would be designing the bench and the voices in tandem. Trying to retrofit this onto an existing bench is uh, obviously running up with some problems. So it's the same with the leg voice. I would, I would design the bench differently if I could to work with the voice and uh, it would work a lot better. But the first thing we have anyway is we have two cams, so that's working fine. Then we have two tenon arms heading in and we have to stop them racking. That's why I put a bar through both um, cams on the front, locking the fronts of the tenons together. I'll show you under the bench now in a, in a second, but we have also the back of the tenons locked together. So it's tr just to keep them parallel, stop one coming ahead of the other because if, if, they, if they rack, they wedge, and that's a problem. At the minute, it's kind of catching on the locking system in the back, so I have to work on that. Obviously, the front of the voice has to be free to a certain degree because the, cam is, the cams are pushing this fella against whatever we want to wedge. So that's a little issue. I might put two pins in front of this just to keep it from moving any further than that, just to make it a bit more usable. But then I'll have to recess those pins into the back of our voice for when we, when we close it up like that. Obviously we'll have to hide them somehow or they'll have to go into the voice. So it'll just mean a little, taking a little notch out of this so that those pins can sit in. But um, if we can keep this guy close to the cams, stop him racking and locking things up, 
that's uh, one issue we're going to have. So yeah, the bar through the two cams is working well. It keeps these guys parallel. I have them screwed at the back parallel as well. All I have to do now is come up with a system of locking it. And uh, I have kind of a crude system in there at the minute. Again, I'll show you guys in a second. I have another bar underneath. And like it's that sawtooth kind of thing again where the bar goes up into it and locks. So it doesn't work too bad. Again, the beauty of a moxing voice is you can go all the way through it down to the floor. You have no mechanism in the way, which is handy. So you can put long pieces into your bench. So the idea being how we, we would use this now is use the bar to push it together. That means two tenon arms are moving in tandem at the same time. So we can lock it down and then we can lock this. Now the bar at the back goes up into the sawtooth when we put on the pressure. So that's working well. It's not great. Um, so I'll show you that now. That's probably the best thing. I'll try and get the camera under this bench and show you what's going on right there. Okay guys, here we are under the bench. Now I'm gonna to have to go handheld here and try and show you this because it's a bit awkward to film, but here's our two tenon arms coming through. I had an existing voice on this bench that I removed, so I'm just using that hole so not to be cutting any more holes in the bench. So that's our two tenon arms. This is our cross piece keeping these two tenon arms parallel at the back so it's screwed here and here. I've also drilled a hole, a 20mm hole again, and put another bar through the back. And here is our locking mechanism that I'm working on at the minute. I also just screwed two 4B2s or 2x4s just as kind of um, runners, just to keep everything nice and straight coming through. So I have one on either side. Again, this is all just crude now at the minute until we find out a way of making this work. And then I have a kind of a sawtooth pattern, but I used, um, Forstner bits to drill this out and then cut it on the bandsaw back at an angle at 45. So if I can just show you that there. Oh, get the camera to focus, there we go. So this is what our bar goes up into as we move this out. Now it's a little bit sticky at the minute but the bar does slip under and as soon as you put it under tension it pulls the bar up into these gaps. Now the only problem being that I'm having at the minute is like I say it's a little bit sticky and awkward to use and the intervals are too big. So the distance between here and here is not enough to clamp say if you were going from a two inch board to a two and a half inch board or a two and a quarter inch board or it's not clamping um, at every distance if you know what I mean so we want to be able to put any size piece in the voice and lock it down so it's not doing that at the minute it's um it's a step in the right direction I think but yeah it's not doing what we needed to do so that's where I'm at at the minute so if you guys can think of anything that we can use for back here for a locking mechanism I'm uh, open to your suggestions but that's what the bench under the bench looks like at the minute so uh, yeah it works well as soon as you put the cams down this bar goes up into those slots and locks so as a mechanism for locking it's not doing too bad but we don't have enough range of movement so yeah that's the underside of the bench okay back on the outside of the voice then and another slight issue i'm having it's not detrimental to the design it's just it's not ideal the voice will still work perfectly but again it's not ideal so my bench is made from four by twos or two by fours depending where they are and uh, so the top two by four is solid the whole way through my bench so my tenon arms have to run in through the middle and um, four inch section here which means my cams are below center it would be better if the cams were up 30 mil so to say if the center of the cam was here it'd be better because then the force would be pushing dead center of this voice but the way it is i have to just be slightly below center so the, the voice does tilt a small bit so the clamping force is, is off the center point so it's pivoting so uh, that's one little issue now again like i say it's not detrimental our piece is in there jammed in there solid like so the clamping force is good the system is good it works well it's just getting a locking mechanism at the back and we are slightly off center because of my bench um, to where the tenon arms are going in. It'd be better if, like I say, these cams were pushing dead center of this piece. So yeah, so the center of that cam does need to be up, it needs to be up 35 mil, 40 mil. So it's nearly, nearly an inch, two inches like so. Yeah, that's, that is what it is. We can't do anything about that, but uh, other than that, the principle is good and the voice is working well. Now, when you guys ask me how did I calculate my cams, there is no real calculation I'm doing. It's kind of brute force engineering here. I'm uh, just trying out things out and seeing how it goes. But a general rule of thumb, what I use when I'm making these is, if you think about it, you offset your hole. So you drill your hole through your cam and you have a 90 degree face 
to this face. So you have a face here and a face here. So I usually keep the face that pushes against our voice two to two and a half times the distance of our top head here. So if I pull that guy around, you can see that sits against the voice. So that's about 15 mil and this is about 35 mil. So it's just at 90 degrees measure out 35 mil. So that face, this face is 90 degrees to this face, if that makes sense. So when I push it around, you can see now I'm starting to force in to my voice and lock it down. Now you don't want to go any more than like two and a half times this measurement because you really will be starting to force that um, mechanism and uh, something's gonna give, something's gonna bend, something's gonna break. So two to two and a half times the distance seems to be working well for me. So look, that face here is 90 degrees to this face. So if you just think, take that measurement, that's how you make your cam. Make this face nice, nice and long and flat. I just drew it freehand once I took those two measurements. I just freehand it around my circle. Round off this edge here so that it slips onto the face like that. So you're not hitting a hard corner here. And it is really just as simple as that. Like I say, this is brute force engineering that I'm using. It's not anything sophisticated. And um, most of the things I do, I just kind of eyeball and uh, they kind of work out. Um, it's the advantage of being, I suppose, 20 years working in engineering fields and electricians and stuff like that. You can kind of just see how things work and you can kind of eyeball it and uh, refine it then to, to, to what it needs to be. But yeah, it's nice and simple. 90 degrees, like I say, two and a half times the distance out to your face that's going to lock on from your top face and you should be good there's nothing more to it than that really so that's it guys that's the mox and voice so you've seen the mechanism now it works it locks in it's jammed in there so we have good cam pressure the only thing we're lacking is a range of movement so we need to be able to pull this out and lock it anywhere and it has to be easy to use otherwise it's a complete waste of time so yeah there we go Here's another little product that I'm working on. So I'm following along, like I said before, with Matt Hesley's um, cabinet build. I'm making this out of walnut. So it's kind of gone on the back burner because I was working on the voices. But I have the top piece made now and just have my chamfered edge. So this is getting ready to be fit. Um, I have to do a final sanding, clean up all these edges. I've just made a bottom piece. So I ran out of walnut. I got another piece, but it wasn't as thick as this. So I had to glue two pieces together to cut my bottom piece out of. So. I need to just cut this up now, chamfer the edge of this, and then I can screw my top and bottom on after I sand everything up. One issue I am having with this walnut, I didn't have it before at walnut, but the last few pieces of walnut I'm after getting, I'm getting splintering on all my sharp corners. So all my edges that I'm trying to keep nice and sharp so that everything closes up and, and you get that nice, tight, clean look, all the edges are splintering. So I have chip out here, chip out here, and uh, yeah, the walnut seems to be very brittle along its edge. So it's a little bit annoying because you get a super clean edge, then you go to put it together and something chips off. Look, there's another piece gone again, look. So I'm getting all this chip out around all of these clean edges. So I'll hit it with a bit of sandpaper and see how we go, but I don't want to round any of them over because you need that clean line. So when I put the screws through here, I don't want to see any gap. I want that nice and uh, tight, no shadow gaps, but with all this chip out, it's really giving me, um, yeah, it's giving me a bit of a hard time. So any of you guys used to working with walnut, um, any tips there would be handy. But uh, yeah, I'm enjoying this build. I'm taking my time with it. It's a nice cabinet build, like half blind or half lap dovetails, dados for the shelf, that kind of thing. It's all done with hand tools. So I'm really enjoying the process, but that's where I'm at with this now. So I'm gonna go make my base piece and get it screwed on, get my top screwed on, and then I need to make my back panel, which is rabbited or rebated in here. So I'm going to make some, I think, like, whoop, four mil plywood or four mil um, walnut panel, maybe glue it together and put it in here. Or I have a bit of oak as well that's already f at four mil. So I might use that for the back panel. It's not going to be seen anyway. So we'll see. We'll see. We can make that decision when the time comes. But that's, yeah, that's where I'm at with this cabinet. Okay, with regards to the shop then, I need some sort of air filtration system. I was looking at the Record Power AC40, I think it is, or AC30, something I can hang here and just leave run when I leave the shop, just to take all that sawdust out of the air, because I'm, I'm starting to feel it in my lungs now, the more I'm spending time in the air. Even though I do wear my respirator when I'm doing any work, it still hangs in the air for a while. So I need some sort of air filter just to clean the air up a small bit, because uh, health is wealth, as they say, and there's no point in, um, you know, running into problems because of your hobby. That's not worth it. Another thing I want to do is add some sort of dust extraction system that I can hook this Record Power DX4000 up to. I use it as a shop vac 
and I can wheel it around so I have it on a base. So I'll still will do that. It's just when I'm working, going from machine to machine, I have to unplug this thing, wheel it over, plug it into the other machine. It's just slowing things down. So if I could plug it into a central location, just turn it on, and then it will pull from all my machines with a blast gate. So that's the plan. I'm gonna hopefully, I'm gonna to get to that this week. Don't hold me to it though, because the way things are, it's hard to get stuff. So I am uh, trying to come up with a, a cost-effective solution. I'm looking at some four inch waste pipe, reducing it down to two inch waste pipe, if that's gonna be cost-effective. Um, but there's not much difference in the price between um, a system I was looking at where you can buy all the parts. So it might make just more sense to buy an actual system itself. So we'll see. But when I make that decision, I'll get it, I'll install it, I'll do a video on it, and then I'll take you guys through it. So I want to hook up my planar thickness R. I want to have um, a dust extraction for my lead. So when I'm sanding and stuff there, I want a hood that will just pull all that sawdust away. I want to hook up my bandsaw. I also want some sort of attachment that I can leave up beside my um, pillar drill because pillar drills with forstner bits produce a ton of uh, chippings. So yeah, something to go there. And then ideally, I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but ideally I would like to run up then and over the top of the workshop and down to my miter saw. So that, thing, that would mean everything is connected and I could just leave that record power extractor over there because it's powerful enough to be used in an integrated system. That's why I got it. And then I only need to disconnect it and wheel it around on its base for when I'm vacuuming the shop. So that is the plan. Hopefully it's gonna happen this week. We'll see. I'm gonna go do a bit of research on it there now. And uh, if I can get the stuff, that'll be a video for this week. So yeah, that's the shop. Right guys, there we go. That's just a little workshop vlog, number five I think. Just an update, just general shop talk. Checking in with you all, see how you're doing, letting you know what I'm at in the shop. Um, just putting that mox and voice um, cam thing out there to see what you guys think of it. And uh, I don't think we're too far away from coming up with a solution. So it's working pretty well, other than we need it to be smoother and we need to be able to lock it at, at any distance. So if we can come up with a way of doing that, that would be fantastic. And we could be onto a winner with this one as well because it's nice and cheap to make. Again, it's the same sheet of plywood that I made the leg voice out of. And I still have a good portion of that sheet of plywood left. So, I mean, if you can get two good, strong voices that are easy to use from one sheet of plywood, then that's a huge saving in money and time and effort and everything else. The simpler we can keep this, I think the better. And so we don't want to make anything too complicated because it has to be easy for people to make and also easy for people to use. So that's the two things we have to try and balance. Yeah, just work on that cabinet then and then the dust extraction system. So uh, yeah, that's it. Hopefully we'll get to that this week. So how are you guys doing? I hope you're all keeping well and uh, everybody's hanging in there. And uh, yeah, it's getting hard now, I think, for everybody. So definitely struggling with the sleep and that's what I'm finding. Um, if I don't get, do a full day's work, I kind of get a bit antsy. So uh, I'm trying to keep busy in the shop and keep the mind occupied, spending some time, quality time with the family as well, which is good. Easter was yesterday, so we had a, a little time doing an Easter egg hunt and uh, ate a bunch of chocolate. <laughs> so that was yesterday, so that was good fun. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Just wanted to check in with everybody and share what I'm doing in the shop, share this moxing voice and get some ideas on it. So. The next video, hopefully, will be a dust extraction system. Fingers crossed, all going well. So there you go, guys. I'm going to go research that now, get out of the shop, and uh, I'll talk to you later.